So a friend of mine has recently bought this off eBay and it's just come over the weekend for him. Uh, apparently it's all been refurbished and everything, but he didn't want to plug it in. And I'll show you why. Look at all that. Someone has decided they wanted to put, you know, a captive kettle lead plug on it, which is fair enough. You know, you, you, you might not want the plug lead that's on it. You might have it in an equipment rack or something. So you just want to be able to put a, a different connector, you know, nice and easy connection. But they've just chopped it and spliced it there. They've not used any chocolate block or waggos or I don't even think they've soldered it and then heat shrunk it. But we'll have a look later on. We'll slice it up and have a look. But they've done that. And then if that isn't bad enough, <laughs> you've got another junk, load of junk there. So basically what they've done is just taken you know, half a half a kettle lead, if you basically imagine that's the piece there. They've had a, a lead with those plugs on both ends, an extension lead, and they've just hacked it and then hacked it into the existing cable on there. I mean, what a mess. So this is actually quite a nice player. It's a MDS 940, so it's one of the first um, high-end models that did MDLP. And if you've seen any of my other videos on the channel, you've seen that uh, the mechs on these are quite easy to work on. Apparently this one's already had the belt changed on it, but we'll find out obviously once I go in it. Um, but they use the same drives on these as they do on the much newer machines like the nine, uh, 980s, the 470s, 480s, you know, even the uh, 2ES, 20ES, triple C, triple five ES models and so on. It's all the same mech, even in the little um, hi-fi systems. It's all the same mech, so if you know where to look, you can pick up a replacement mech if you've got damaged lasers, whatever. Because you cannot buy new lasers no matter what anyone says. They're all refurbished old ones that come from China. So anyone who says the selling you a new laser is having a laugh. So anyway, let's get this opened up. See that screw on the back here. Two screws on the top. I'm also trying out my new little uh, switch for the cameras. So far it seems to be... Uh, much easier around than having to do all this in post editing. So there are two screws on the side here. Oops, sorry, don't mean to be in the way. There you go. And number two there. Just getting used to the new camera angles for everything. Hopefully things will improve. This is mainly just a test video to see how we're doing. What off the case. So we're going to be working on the power supply here. Let's turn that around the other way so the uh, other camera can see it as well. So we'll work on there and on the back you will see that we've got this little grommet and captive plate here. So first of all we want to take this off. Just a metal plate. I'll try and get it in the view here. That's just a metal plate that slides over. The grommet will just lift off, slide off like that. So when you put your new cable in, you will need to bend the cable to get it in like that. Now on the inside, you've got a connector like this. What I usually do with these machines is I'll, I usually have some spare cables that have come from scrap machines, machines that have been taken apart for parts, you know, because they've been physically damaged or, you know, there's major problems with them and they're not salvageable. Um, so usually I would just replace this entire cable, this entire bodge, with a, a cable from a salvaged machine. But for the purposes of video, I will show you just realistically how it should have been done. So what we need to do really, let me just unplug that, it's a bit hard to get them out, there we go, pop that out. And what we're going to do is just chop off the cable to about here and then get rid of all of that. Just chop that off there. That can all get disposed of, recycled. Just strip the cable back. 
make sure we've got a nice little bit there. And then again, strip the cable. Just twist them together so you don't get any frayed wires. And then you want to get yourself a donor cable. The easy solution for that is you just get a similar sort of type of cable. So just a two car. You know, this is rated at five amps for the fuse, which is more than adequate. You only need three amps for these machines. Uh, and that's obviously got the plug on, on one end, a nice bolted plug for the UK. On the other end, it's just a, a captive figure of eight. So what we're going to do is just chop that off. We'll also get rid of this little tie that someone's put on, this little plastic tie. And then we're just going to do the same here. I'm just going to strip off the ends. Like so. So what you can do with these now is a variety of different ways we can solve these. We can solder them with some heat shrink on them we could use wago connectors so for the purposes of the video this video we're just going to use one of these just a standard chocolate block just make sure that the one that you use has got a current rating of what you need for the equipment in this case this is perfectly fine for 13 amps but we only need three amps realistically five amps because we've got the uh, fuse which is rated at five amps on here so you just pop your cables in, matching up the colours. Make sure you haven't got anything exposed. So what you want to do now is just tighten these up. Give it a quick test. Thread it back through now. Put the connector out of the way on the inside. Plug it back in. And then ideally, we just want to wrap that in a little bit of tape just to protect it. Or stick it to the side. If there's you know, out of the way like so. Make it nice and neat. What we'll do is just pop a little bit of tape around this. You don't really need to do this if I'm honest, it's just a little bit extra security. And as I say, I usually wouldn't do this, it's just for the purposes of this video. Just to show you a quick and safe way to make your connection on the inside rather than having it on the outside. And then what we can do is just tuck all that cable We just took all that cable down there now, out of the way. Bring part of it on the outside, just bend it. And bend it now, ready to put the heat grommet back on. it will be tight because it's a, it's a different cable so you just get your make sure you get your plate the right way around there's a little notch there which goes against so you want to turn it that way around and then just force it into the bracket hopefully you can see what I've done there offer it up the, uh, put the screws back in. And then you want to just put, offer it up to that little locating notch. Put your screws back in. two of these and as 
on the inside you just want to uh, just tidy it up try not to put any strain on the actual block if you can help it just pop it in that area like that you see it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to touch anything it's all nice and safe tucked out of the way so there we have a nice single piece safe cable what we'll do is we'll just actually check this machine now because it's not actually been tested by me yet just to see if the uh, belt and everything is okay on it so we have power the machines all come on let's find a uh, new disc Yeah, the belts feel like they've been changed on it. So it looks like, yeah. Another thing to check is just that the machine will actually record, because that's another symptom of a bad belt, is that they won't record. Which it won't at the minute, we need to change the input over. Change to unlock in. It should let us record now. There we go, new track. We're just watching to make sure that the record head moves down. All this assembly should slide to the back here, which is driven by the same belt. So, yep, the heads have gone down. We'll start recording. Tell it to stop. And now when we tell it to eject, it should drop back down again just to write the table of contents. And this is where they usually fail, where if your machine displays a blank disk now when you put it back in, then this has failed here. And you need to replace it and they're very hard to get hold of the replacement shoes now. Uh, we should see it come up. Yeah, we've got two tracks showing now. That's working. So I hope you found that interesting, you know, how to safely fix a, a cable. Always make the join inside the machine if you can. If you haven't got access to something like Waggos or a soldering iron, then you can just do as I've shown you now and just use a chocolate block. Just make sure it's the right rating. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe and I hope that the future videos I produce will be a lot better than this one because as I say I'm just testing out some new equipment and uh, hopefully get into the flow. Well, thanks for watching and see you again soon. Bye for now.